Good evening, church. Great week, I believe the Lord has granted all of us. The Lord will renew your strength in Jesus' name. Matthew 16, sorry, Proverbs 16, verse 14 and 15. Proverbs 16, verse 14 and 15. Is the king's wrath. But the wise man will appease it. Say after me, say, as messengers of death is the king's wrath. But a wise man will appease it. Verse 15. In the light of the king's face is life, and his favor is like a cloud. Of the latter rain. What you draw from a king can either be life or death. His wrath brings death, his favor brings life. And you are kings and priests unto the Lord. But scripture told you without doubt that life and death is in the power of the tongue. How much more the power of the tongue of the righteous. So everywhere you go, there are two possibilities that can flow out of you. Are you following? Death or life. But by the grace of God, life will flow out of us. Matthew 10 from verse 11 to 15. Matthew 10 Bible is too sharp. Matthew 10, 11 to 15. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is in who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. Somebody say, I carry peace. In the countenance of a king, his, his countenance is like latter rain. Said, let your peace. It's not something you are looking for. It's with you. If you are God's servant, if you are a Christian, you carry peace. If the household is worthy, let your peace rest, come upon him. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, Shake off the dust from your feet. As surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment for than for that city. When you meet a man truly sent by God, two possibilities are around the corner. He carries a peace and the peace is tangible. I mean, it's not just an idea, it's a reality. It can be even be transferred. When the apostles greet in the scripture and say grace and peace be multiplied to you, they are not just imagining. They are passing something real. You're, there is a peace that you have that you can cast upon a place. Are you following me? May your feet carry the peace of God. May your presence somewhere bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. But without doubt too, what people receive from you is going to be determined by their own response. If they do not receive you, let the dust of your feet, be, you know, be, you should push it there. He said it will be more tolerable for Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah seem to have one of the worst judgments in scripture. Totally bombed. Never grew back again. But the Bible says, by the time you compare what will happen to somebody that refused the gospel of peace, Sodom and Gomorrah will be more tolerable. Which means you cannot even imagine the judgment of refusing the peace of God. And I saw, because of time, in Acts chapter 13, verse 42 to 52, I saw Apostle Paul 
do this thing. The first time in that city, they received him in Acts 13. He preached to them. And they told them to come the next Sabbath. And as the next Sabbath came, the Bible says some people rose up and they began, they began to speak against the truth. Then he dusted his sandals against that city. If you really know you carry this dimension of power, question, which of them will flow easily from you? The constructive one of you will be looking at people. May I not do something for you that will make even Sodom and Gomorrah have a more easy path than you? Scripture told me that you have the power to bind and to loose. To bring you to certain consciousness you have as a believer. You are a king. Are we together? In your countenance, there is life. When you favor people, God's favor will flow through it. Are you following me? When you pray for people, God will heal people through it. It's your hand, but it's God's move. Are you following me? You must understand. In Matthew 16, verse 19, the Bible says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. So, you have the power to bind and to loose. And for you to know, Jesus was not just saying a statement that he couldn't uh, back. He said it again in Matthew 18, verse 18. <laughs> so, when something is repeated twice, you know that it means, it means it's something serious. In Matthew 18, verse 18, he said, I should I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Say, whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Say, whatever I lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's some power. In fact, making it more. In John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23, Jesus said a statement that if it, if it didn't come from the mouth of Jesus, it might have been considered blasphemous. Jesus said to them, and them there is the disciples, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he said to them, and when he has said it, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in verse 23, he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sin of any, they are retained. How many of you believe this? Somebody say, eh? I like this. I will know the type of art you will have is how you will respond to this dimension of power made available to you. So I can retain. When I first got born again, one of the stories we had was the story of our robbers, I think, attacked, is it Archbishop Idauza or Bishop David Oedepo? And, and I think it was that. And he said, you don't know who you, and they, they pointed the gun to I retain your sin. And the man dropped them. So we are looking for who to retain his sin. To prove God's power. But today you will understand that you are mercy merchants. I said you are mercy merchants. Uh, this power is not given to us for destruction. It's given for edification. But never doubt it, we carry power. And never doubt it, we can allow our peace to rest upon a place. And the way people receive us can determine whether they walk in peace or they create troubles for themselves. You are not a personality to be pitied. You carry God. Are you following me, church? But de definitely, who are you? Because you can, you can, power can make you a despot when you don't understand this, this purpose. Jeremiah chapter 40, verse 13 to 16, and I read verse chapter 41, verse 1 to 7. And I want to bring you a story. Jeremiah chapter 40, verse 13 to 16. Now this story happened after the fall of Jerusalem. And so there remained the remnant of people that were gathered around a vassal governor that Nebuchadnezzar raised for Israel, which, who was called Gedaliah. Follow. So the Bible said, moreover, Johanan, the son of Kari, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Gedaliah, that governor, at Mizpah. And they said to him, do you know certainly, do you certainly know that Bali is the king of the Ammonites has sent Ishmael, the son of Netaniah, to murder you? 
But Gedaliah, the son of Icam, did not believe them. Then Joanna, the son of Karia, spoke secretly to Gedaliah in Mizpah, saying, Let me go, please, and I will kill Ishmael, the son of Netaniah. And no one will know it. Why should he murder you so that all the Jews who are gathered to you will be scattered and the remnant in Judah will perish? But Gedaliah, the son of Icam, said to Joanna, the son of Karia, You shall not do this thing. For you speak falsely concerning Ishmael. Chapter 41. Now, they just announced to him that there is an assassin around him. And sometimes, it's a person that pulls the trigger first that wins. Can you imagine if this man had acted at that moment? Look at, look at his life. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the, that, that Ishmael, the son of Netaniah, the son of Elishama, of the royal family and of the officers of the king, came with ten men to Gedaliah, the son of Aikam, at Mizpah. And they ate bread together in Mizpah. Why were they eating bread? Because Gedaliah did not believe their testimony concerning this Ishmael. Then Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and the ten men who were with him, arose and struck Gedaliah, the son of Icam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and killed him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also struck down all the Jews who were with him, that is, with Gedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans who were found there, the men of war. It happened on the second day that after he had killed Gedaliah, when asked, yet no one knew it. Certain men came from Sheshem, from Shiloh, from Samaria, 80 men with their beds shaved and their clothes torn, having caught themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. Now Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, went up from them to Mizpah, weeping along as as it went, and it happened as, they, as he met them, that he said to them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Aikam. Verse 7. So it was when they came into the midst of the city that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, killed them. And cast them into the midst of it, it, he and the men that were with him. How many of you feel bad for Gedaliah? Now, it wouldn't be so bad if he was taken unawares. But now, they told him before that this guy is coming to kill you. And he said, I don't believe. And he made, ultimately, the guy came and what? Killed him. Scattered Israel. There is a point you get to in life where you understand that uh, life is not this simple. That not everybody wishes you well. How many of you agree? Now, there's a point you will get to where your naivety of life will have to be taken away. Where you think everybody is happy when God lifts you. And it can become an obsession that possesses your mind. So today, even when people don't know who is fighting them, they know there's an enemy somewhere. So they shoot multiple arrows wherever the enemy is, wherever they are gathered. So you hear things that surely shall they gather. Because even if we don't know, but we know surely. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's why you, you can... There's one prayer that everybody, when they are praying, they believe that must start somewhere. Is that anybody wishing me bad? But you don't need to be 25 to know that for that reality to stick somewhere in your mind. And sometimes it can even erode into your value. So as a Christian, you think, I better kill them before they kill me. Isn't it? Is it true? Should we kill them before they kill us? Talk to me. Is Gedaliah being stupid? Talk to me. Is he a stupid man? After you read that, is Gedaliah a wise man? Talk to eh? People don't want to answer because they don't know where pastor is going. Is Gedaliah a wise man? If you are in Gedaliah's shoe, what will you do? Will you just believe 
untraceable, without proven proof that somebody has good will towards you. The Bible says when Ishmael came, Gedaliah set food before him. Gedaliah is a type of man that, that is called a free thinker. Oh, forget it. For this. And so, that's not even my focus. My focus is that we can get so much worked up with this reality that it can begin to affect our capacity to be a merciful person. How many of you discover that mercy makes you look weak? When you are mean, people fear you. But when people say, hey, the pastor, people in this church will say, hey, pastor, we rake for you now. And play with you. So sometimes, when, you, when they do things, they don't expect certain far-reaching implications to happen. So one of those days when I take a posture that is not the norm, they find it very strange. Like if I decide to suspend, because I do. I can decide to tell you that, okay, that's your thing you are doing. You are not doing it again. If you say, okay, ah, for pastor, ah, you are stopping me. Me and God will solve it. Don't go and report me to God. You will soon discover that it's God that gave me the authority to stop it. Are you following? And um, when people are mean, when you meet mean leaders, even if you don't honor them, you fear them. Should that turn us to very mean people? Why is it that people don't honor merciful people? Are you following? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Someone say, Be merciful. It's not a point of weakness. In fact, you are opening up for yourself greater opportunities in the spirit when you are a merciful person. That's what the Bible says. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Who needs mercy here? God will give it to you in Jesus' name. In, in verse 43 to 48 of that same Matthew chapter 5. Verse 43. You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and what? Hate your enemy. Does that, is that not logical? Sometimes when our parents are growing old, they call you, these are the people to respect. And when they, from generation to generation, there's nothing good that can come out of them. They are our enemy. Don't worry. You have heard it. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Yes. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Now, put somewhere in your mind, get a liar. Hey, Pastor, this thing is easy to say. Oh. But this was what Gedaliah was doing. When his enemy came, he put food on him. Pastor, he died though. God did not deliver him. Which means there will be a conflict in your mind rather to either stay with what they used to say or what Jesus is saying. Are you following me? So I said to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the sons of of your father in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. If you love those who love you, what reward have you? If, do not even tax collectors do this, eh? If you greet only your brethren, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors and scripture. When they say tax collectors in those days, that's the, I, it's like when they say, do not, uh, who are the description of sin now? Eh? 
Does, uh, if you greet your people that greet, does your old boys not do the same? Or policemen? I didn't say. Therefore, you shall be perfect. Thus, as your father in heaven is perfect. If you measure yourself against yourself, you won't still, you won't still attain God's plan. You must measure yourself in line with God. You are made in his likeness. Are we together? Say, mercy is our nature. So in Romans chapter 12 verse 14, Romans chapter 12 verse 14 said, you should bless and you should not curse. Romans 12 verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless. Somebody say bless. bless. Do not curse. I've shown you two dimensions of power that can flow out of a king. His countenance is a, is a latter rain. It's a wrath and messengers of death. But one is determined to be residual and never to be active. That's not God's plan. God's plan for you and for me is that the only fountain that flows out of me and you is a fountain called bless. No matter the provocation. And I'm not talking about even in conducive circumstances. Because if you bless them that bless you, there is no reward there. I'm talking about when it is not conducive. That's when the real Christianity in you is, te- is tested. Where you wish that God. Ha! You know, Moses looked at some people and said, if these people die a normal death, that is, there are people that even death is not good judgment for. He looked at this, the way they dealt with him in the wilderness. He said, God, if these people die a normal death, that's not good. But if you will do a new thing, that the ground will open and these people will go down to head straight, spirit, soul, and body, and God did it. Yet, it did not suffice for Moses that time. How many of you have met people that you feel like dead should not suffice? If they say they die, in a talk pushika, I go you over. They say, yeah, God will judge them. God will judge them. They say, hmm. God judge them now. And if he wants to judge them, don't judge them no man. In James 3, from verse 8 to 12, James 3, verse 8 to 12, the Bible was speaking about the tongues, and no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. The Bible says, with it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of that same God. The Bible says, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. The way God, though these possibilities can come out of you, but the, what God wants is for you to be a merchant of mercy. This is ought not to be so. Why? Because a spring cannot produce fresh and bitter water at the same time. You can't go to the sea. When you get to the sea, salt water. It's not, water is not water. If you go to the sea and take and drink salt water, you will get more dehydrated because it will take all the normal water out of your body. Are you following me? They are not the same. So the Bible says, we should get to a point where it never settles in our mind to be agents of destruction. Are you following me? Even if you have been treated bad, and even if life has done something wrong to you, God said never let it settle in your mind that you are an agent of destruction. In fact, what should occupy your mind anytime you remember that you can retain peace and you can forgive sin is that you can forgive sin. Are you following me? And so, 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 sometimes you need to understand that the power that God has given to you as a believer is to lose. I say, I say it's to lose. I will, still, I will stay here. In 1 Samuel 24, verse 16 to 22, in the sojourns of David, one of these days, 1 Samuel 24, verse 16 to 22, he had come upon Saul who was going around to kill him. So, 
The Bible says, so it was when David had finished speaking this words to Saul, that Saul said, is this your voice, my son, David? David lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, you are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. How many of you can do that? Now, it's better to do good to people if they are neutral, but if people have done you bad things, you know, my friends used to say, first to do, no, they pay. But that is the first time you do. That's the last time. Because me, I will do my own. No, you are your rabbi. That, my friend, is from, is from Edo. They will do their own. And they will not say behind you. They will tell you to your face. You don't do your own. I will do my own. And they will do their own. The Bible says, so said, you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. If a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Don't forget, first to put a trigger. Because if your enemy finds you, you might not get away. But if you find your enemy, is it not just for him not to get away? If a man finds an enemy, will he let him get away? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your end. Therefore, swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me and you will not destroy my name from my, from my father's house. And David swore to Saul. David had the desire, the decision to still be a blessing to a man chasing his life. Oh, you don't understand. Your life is your greatest treasure. I'm not, now, if they touch some of your cars, you can hit people. So, you understand that David had grown so much. This man, this man was not looking for David's wife. What if you do your worry? You will see the type of rot that can come, but that is still lesser than if they are chasing for your life. At that point, every reasoning, every thought of being a merciful personality will get out of the window because your greatest treasure is under attack. Life. And David said, so I won't cut you off. <laughs> so you think it's Jesus that first said it. This is the nature of God. Even in the Old Testament, it was there. 1 Samuel 23 verse 14 spoke about how Saul sought David. 1 Samuel 23 14. David stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness, remained in the wilderness of Sip. Saul sought him how many days? Uh, can something that has been going around to kill you every day come into your hand? And you will let it go. But God did not deliver him. David as a type and shadow of a man that embodies mercy. The grace and riches that I trust the Lord to multiply in our lives. I thought you would say a better amen. Oh, let me tell you the truth. You think mercy is cheap. Some Christians can be more mean than unbelievers. <laughs> Pastor, have you ever seen Christians that say, or don't make the look mad by me? I will not eat. I will not sit drink. If that man leaves, that's how they prove power. For killing God of this commission. I used to have friends who say, "Oh, don't make that way the Lord you kill." Bag bag, we are my dad. Some some of you like those type of churches because you know there are people chasing you every day. So when I come here and I'm preaching mercy, you feel I'm disarming me. I'm disarming you. I'm not giving you the right response to conflict. Isn't it? Talk to me. But if I say, 
the next three days, I want to wow go ni. Hayaka bota. Ah. Ebu mi wow. Bring water. As I pour the water, their life. The pastor has changed girl. Pastor means business now. <laughs> In Second Samuel chapter nine, from verse one. Second Samuel chapter nine, from verse one. David said, "Now David had become king. He had escaped all the conflict. God has fought for him, as God will fight for somebody here." David said, "Is there anyone who is still left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness?" There is now. Saul's household did not deal with David with kindness. Saul sought him every day. How many of you know people that never say anything good about you? If you are in a committee, they will be against you. If you are in a workplace, anything that brings you together, they are always if you preach, you did not preach well. If you cancel, you did not talk to me. As you, have you ever met such conflict in your life before? There are people that everybody will clap for you. They will not be moved. So say, what did he do? What did he do? I had a lady in school those days. The more I'm blessing people and everybody, you know, she believed any man of God that is very expressive must have a secret sin. That, you know there are people that anytime they see you that you, are, you, are, you can express yourself you are free, you can joke they feel like you are not a man of God how many of you have met people like that before? <laughs> they feel like a man of God should be looking sad they feel like but if you look sad they will not, you can't even Jesus said about the generation he said we wept for them, they did not weep he said, we laughed. They did not laugh. He said, John the Baptist came neither eating. Guy was in the wilderness. He didn't eat. He was wearing camel's clothes. You say he has a demon. He said, the son of man came. He was eating. He said, he's a gluten. He's not a man of God. Oh my God. One of the challenges you are going to face in life is that there are people you cannot make meaning to no matter what you do. Ah, uh, you he didn't hear what I'm saying. All of you who are trying to win every argument and have an appeal with everybody, you are going to get frustrated when you get to that junction because you will get there one day. Are you following me? If you preach too much, it's too long. If you preach too short, it's too short. If you stand to, if you use a description, you should not have used that. If you talk about his wife, you should not talk about his wife. If he does not talk about his wife, they said, but he doesn't use his family as example. You see, because of the mind of man, and I'm telling you the truth. And if you are so occupied with just winning with people, you are going to get very frustrated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, is there still somebody in Saul's house? So that I can show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Do you know why? Jonathan was Saul's son. But for one strange reason or the other, he was David's best friend. A man that has a heart for God will always find a reason for mercy to flow out of him. Every time you are thinking about Saul, there is a Jonathan. I'm in that same household. What am I trying to say? The type of heart you have will, de- will help you to see even goodness in your greatest conflicts. Are you following me? They say, some people we see, even when you are doing them good, they see, when you are Jonathan, they see Saul. But in some other people, when you are Saul, they see what? They see Jonathan and say, well, uh, he's a very angry person, but you know what? The reason why he's angry is because he's tired. Because it's not for anything. It's the type of person you are. May God make you a mercy merchant. Uh, you are not hearing me. Is there somebody in Saul's house? I'm blessing for Jonathan's sake. I don't have any. I must find a reason. May God give you capacity to always find a reason to bless.
Hey, he's fighting me at work. But the issue is that we first, the first reason why I have conflict at work is because I have work. <laughs> if you don't have work, you can't have conflict at work. Are you following me? He found, and the Bible said they went to bring Mephibosheth. Amazingly, Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan, but that was lame. That when they brought him, he himself said, I'm a dog. The king should not even look at me, but the king's heart is a heart of mercy. He said, Mephibosheth, you will hit with me on the table. The guy couldn't fathom it. Why are you doing this to me? Oh my God, are you following me? People that think that when they, you see them, you will slam your door. Suddenly you open your door and say, sit down, sit on the table with me, eat with me. You are telling them, you know, you got it wrong, but God has a plan for your life. And they can't fathom me. And Mephibosheth can't fathom. He said, David, why, why are you saying this to your servant? It is my father's household that fought you. You almost died. Because of my father's household. And David said, it's not what you did, it's who I am. It's not what you did, it's who I am. And many a times, most of us, what people have done to us is almost overcoming who we are. Are you following me? It's, it's, it's time that we, we know that we have to be merciful as our father. That's the nature that we want to be like. Not any other thing. Not what people are making of us. Not what people are even doing to us. Are you following me? Hey, there will be conflict. People will show you. Can I tell you? New levels, new devils. How many of you are looking for, expecting next level of increase? There will be next level of conflict. You will wake up one day and say, Ah, ah. Aye, le. Aye, ma, le. So people will lie and stand by it, side by side. With their face. Oh God, money, yes. But we shall So people will smile with you. You will take them to lunch. You will eat with them. The next time you are going to hear what they said about you, you will almost enter the ground. Hey, it's life. Everybody is friend until there's something between the two of you that if they don't get, if, you don't, if, if they don't push you aside, they can't get. I mean, if, that's why you keep changing best friend. All the people you call best friend, years ago, best. So we don't have best friend now, we have bestie because it's changeable according to the new level of conflict. Where are your best friends? Ask your neighbor, where, is your, where are your best friends? Where are your best friends? Some of the people you call best friends those days, they were just gist partners. Your greatest problem at that time is that you needed to gist. And so because somebody was gisting with you, you thought they were your friend. Until he just came and conflicted, and you discovered this place is not even my friend. It's even better for you to discover it's not your friend than for you to discover it's even your enemy. Because that one can be, even be a greater shock. Are you following me? It's amazing that no matter what you do to people, people can forget it. The fearful reality. May God, may God keep your heart. I thought you would say a better amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 7 and 8 told us. Isaiah 32 verse 7 and 8. Eh? The Libra man. Isaiah 32 7 and 8. Said that also the schema of the... Uh, the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy poor with lying words. Please, is there somebody here that have met somebody that you were so shocked about their capacity to devise evil? Some people stumble to him, but some people devise it. Pastor, my one. Mad daughter, day. Sheko niwa. You will have. There are people in this life who can devise. It's not like they just found themselves in evil. <laughs> they are evil. <laughs> they are evil merchants. It devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaks of justice. 
Verse 8 said, But a generous man devises generous things. This is an opportunity to regard. You know, some of you, when you see something, that's, have you noticed that when people are traveling now, they don't tell anybody? It's the weekend of their traveling that people will know. You know they, because in their mind, it's verse 7 that is more present. The scheme of evil men. Some people can make you an enemy because you marry. Tell them. One man shall join your marriage, you know, marriage in your love. Anybody that wants to marry, go loshe. Anybody that wants to give back to five children, go be. Don't make an end. You know what I'm saying? Some people can say, ah, how can he just be smiling? Some people, when your child don't have conflict, they said you are not a man of God. Because if you're a man of God, the devil should be fighting you. Such a tent to do. No problem. If you want to embrace problem, we're going to be looking for me. I have overcome the world. <laughs> We wish joining me. Someone said, I have overcome the world. When he shows up, that's why I have enough power, but I don't look for it. In, in Psalms 36, verse 4, I, I want to. Psalm 36, verse 4. The Bible said, Some people, he devises wickedness on his bed. There's some people, when they sleep, ED has started liking. Pastor has started showing favor to Danny. He doesn't really know him. I will make him know him. The question I should ask is that, please, what would that do to you? He devises wickedness on his way. He set himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Proverbs 14.22 Verse 14 22. I wish I, I just. They do not go astray. Do they not go astray who devise evil? But mercy and truth belong to those who devise good. May you be a man who devise good. There is capacity to devise evil and there is capacity to devise good. So look, you can be a man wired that looks for progress of people. I can be a man wired that looks for a way to oppress people because they are needy. You won't even know. Your eyes are looking for anybody that is needy. I told somebody, I said, what, a, what draws the shepherd to a sheep? When he sees it, is that he sees weakness. This thing must be strong. It's the same thing that draws a predator to the sheep. But what matters? The shepherd sees a weak sheep and he not just to strength. The predator sees a weak sheep that is cheap for food. The lion does not feel bad seeing an animal that has broken leg. What does he do? Pray the Lord oh sing my soul. That one is not working well. Some people when they enter a church they know everybody that does not have job because they have found elsewhere. Well. Instantly they say, yeah, on Nisha, my mate, my lo. May God change your mind. May you be somebody, yeah, on Nisha, my Nisha. Do you get what I'm saying? That person is not, it's not gainfully employed. What can we do? Some other people. Not even working very well. The marine of Gomo Milo School. Ah, that's somebody's son. <laughs> now it's better, it's even better if you are doing it. Just to occupy the person. But some people are not doing it to occupy. They just found easy prey. If you're operating like that, you are not a shepherd. You are a predator. You are an hunter. Throughout the scripture, I discover God doesn't bless hunters. Ishmael is an hunter. Esau is an hunter. Have you noticed? God always bless shepherds. Be a shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd. It's your pattern. Look for weakness to turn it to strength. Not an opportunity to gain advantage over people. Somebody say amen. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, because David is a mercy merchant. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1. And listen, I'm going to, to the message now. It happened after this, 
that the king of the people of Amnon died. And Anun, his son, reigned in his place. And David said, I will show kindness. That was what he did in chapter 9. It is his nature. In chapter 9, he said, let me show kindness to the house of Saul. In chapter 10, he said, I will show kindness to Anun, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness to me. It is even a kind that to remember what people have done to you. How many of you? Some of you. Well, you, before you marry, people sat with you. Talk, 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 talk. This, 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 this is your husband. This is how to do. This is, you don't know the investment of those times. You think it's play. Some people say, but they should have done it now. Is it not their job? If they did not do it, will you? Will you have helped them? When you don't want to be thankful, you always find a reason to say, well, it is what is normal. It is when it is not done that you know it's not normal. It's the price. Emperor, pray for you. I appreciate it. It is that's like it's normal. It is. May you not see vacuum. Your father is paying your school fees. Says it's his responsibility. Oh, tira on to be one thousand. I, 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 I call on be more. Go buy lulu onto. Only one person that give birth is the community that takes care of the child. It's their fathers too. David said, I will show kindness because he showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. David's servant came into the land of the people of Amnon. The princes of the people of Amnon said to Anun, their Lord, do you think that David really honors your father? You see, they just devise. What, is, what make them think this way? Just then. Do you think David really honors your father because he has sent confidence to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to search the city? To spy it out and to overthrow it. If some people interpret what you do for you. Say, Pastor, but then sorry, it was me you were trying to talk. I know, I know. You always feel like you cease to preach. I've told you the story of one man of God that was dancing and dancing in the presence of the Lord. Presence of the Lord. He was so happy. Like when the Spirit of David came upon him, then in the night he received a text. From a lady in the church. When you are dancing in church in the morning, I was just imagining you on top of me. Because a dancing left him. Because of the minds of people. They told their king, David is not coming to comfort. David is coming to spy. You know, this is a moment of transition. A moment of transition, we either draw people that come to strengthen your people that come to weaken you. And so they couldn't perceive. Their type of art couldn't perceive the intention of David. Therefore, Anun took David's servant, shaved off half of his beard, cut their garment in the middle at their buttocks and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them. Because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your breads have grown and then return. David first sat. It was not over, you know, anger was not the first thing. The first thing is rehabilitating his own messengers. When the people of Amnon saw that they have made themselves repulsive, somebody said they made themselves. Now I'm going to a point in life. I have to show you what people receive from you. They determine it. You don't need to curse. People will make Themselves. It was not David that made them repulsive. They made themselves repulsive to David. The people of Amnon sent and hired Syrians of Betretop, Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen from the king of Makkah, 1,000 men from Ishbot, 12,000 men. Now, when David had it, they were the ones who did evil. They are the ones who are gathering an army. They, you know, some people are so full of themselves that even when they see their hero, they double. Instead of them to say, ah, I miss it. What do they do? They double down. Say, ah, ah, that's what my beam is in by me. No, go. You know what I'm saying? Say, ah, what I did is wrong. Ah, but I know they're angry with me. But before, they are even angry. Me too. I will not give anybody face. Because there's no mercy in your heart. 
You just do- they doubled that. When David heard of it, David was not even occupied with vengeance. And since that's what you now said, that's why when they don't receive you, the other only place where the other part of power flows out of us is determined by people's response. It is not our mission to go and cause. But people can be caused. David sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. The people of Amnon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate. The Syrians of Zobah, Betreob, Ishtob, Makkah were by themselves in the field. So there were two, two fronts of the battle. The ones that he hired and the ones that came against David. When Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best. Put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Amnon. Now, someone said people of Amnon. By half time, I will show you how Amnon was a nation that kept repaying evil for good for Israel. Then he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Amnon are too strong for you, then you shall come and I will come and help you. Be of good courage. Let us be strong for our people and for our cities. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. Somebody say, God will do what is good in his sight. I, I didn't hear you very well. I said, God will do what is good in his sight. Let me tell you, it is good in God's sight to repay people with evil for what they have done to you. It is God that will do it. It was not David who determined to get his own pound of flesh. Are you following me? David said, let God do what he wants to do. And do you know what happened? Next verse said, Joab and the people who are with him drew near to the battle against the Syrians and they fled before them. I want you to know today that God is committed to the side of good. You didn't hear what I said. I said God is committed to the side of good. You see, they didn't win the battle because they were stronger. They didn't win the battle because they had more men. They won the battle because God saw the values that they kept. And God said, I must honor this value. You see, if you have reacted in the flesh, you would have given God no opportunity to act the way he wants to act. Are you following me? But if you act the way God wants you to act, you have given God the platform to say, that is a good thing. They didn't take loss into their hand. I will now be their defender. Most of us have fought for ourselves until God, God now put his hand in his pocket. Since you can fight for yourself, come on, may I, let me to be looking at you. May you teach me warfare now. The Lord, my God, is a man of war. That's what the book of Exodus says. Someone say, God is a man of war. He's been fighting it. You were not born. The heart was not made when there was a war in heaven. And the devil and his angels re- rebelled against God. And Michael and the angels were... God! You see, God has been experiencing... You've not seen the level of cantacarous war that God has seen. But he has never lost a battle. Are you, are you still with me? Let's go back to that story. Because of certain things I, I want to draw out for me. When the people of Amnon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai. They entered the city. Joab returned from the people of Amnon and went to Jerusalem. You think they should have learned their lesson, isn't it? Shouldn't they have learned their lesson? When the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered together. For people's head, they will never land. At the desert Adadezah said, and brought out Syrians who were beyond the river. They came to Elam, Shobak, the commander of Adadezah, and he came before them. When it was told David. Have many of you seen that? David is always there. <laughs> he gathered all this way. Crossed over Jordan. Came to Ella. The Syrians set themselves in battle array against David and fought with him. The Syrians fled before Israel. David killed 700 characters, 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians. People that had no business in the, in the battle. It was the Hamnon that was fighting. Please don't join a rebellious man. Struck Shobak, the commander of the army, who died there. That's 19. 
when all the kings who were servants of Adonijah saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel. So the, the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. So when the people of Ammon come again, they say, ah, it's just that David, I've learned enough. Some of us have gone through cycles that should have made us learn enough that there are certain battles that are not your call. You don't learn it. Keep repeating your pain. But this Syrian said, oh, it's your father that died. You are the one that uh, treated David's men despitefully. Mama, please separate some people's battle from your battle. If anybody is fighting their battle, let them fight. You know, some of you just put your head in the midst of a conflict. You don't know the genesis. My friend's enemy is my continue. Experience. It's not your headache. It's not your battle, but you put yourself in the center of it, looking for a conflict that is not your conflict. Romans chapter 12 verse 19 told us, when you do what is good, when you refuse to, to fight by yourself, to you give God room, Beloved, do not avenge yourself. Tell them, don't avenge yourself. But rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I want you to know today that it is a just operation of God to repay people for the wrong they've done to you, even if you don't lift your finger. Now, because I said God is a merciful God, does not mean God is not a judge. Are you following me? God, I say, I will repay. Somebody say, God will repay. Let, let me go to 2 Thessalonians 1. From verse 3 to 12. If I can, if I can read this scripture. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting. Because your faith grows exceedingly and your love for every one of you, are, of, every one of, all, of you all are bound towards each other. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Tell your neighbor, have an enduring power. Don't get easily worked up. Endure persecutions. If you don't know how to endure, you will react when you need to keep quiet. There are sometimes you are not being a fool for keeping quiet. You are just passing the bulk of the warfare from you to God's hand. But at that point, everything in you will be reacting. You need endurance. Endurance stay true even when things are against you. Are you following me, church? Am I making sense? He said, he said go, give me that verse 4 again. Let me, let me tie it. Persecutions and tribulations that you endure, verse 5, yes? Which is a manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God. That though you are counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer. That you may become. Since it's a righteous thing with God to repair with tribulation those who trouble you. Somebody say it's a righteous thing with God to repair with tribulation those who trouble you. But it's only God's, it's only in God's hand that it is righteous. In your hand itself. What I'm trying to tell you today is that when you don't fight for yourself, it does not mean God will not fight for you. When God starts fighting for you, you will beg God on behalf of the people who are fighting. Then you see. It is a righteous thing with God. Don't think God is blind when people are lying against you, maligning you, saying things that are not true. Don't think God is blind. That God is long-suffering does not mean God does not have judgment. Go to the church, you scatter the church, you lie against the some, You know, some pastors will just start their church. They will scatter some people's churches. They say, yeah, it's, it's the kingdom. Don't worry. There's nothing new about starting ministry. Are you hearing? Nothing new. But it's a righteous thing with God. If you have done something, God is waiting quietly for a time for, may you, may you find mercy today. Tell me. One of my friends was talking, we were talking two days ago. 
was talking, he was talking to me about what one of his proteges did to him. And he looked at me and said, Pastor, I'm not worried about that dog. When somebody talks like that, he said, I'm not worried about that dog. It is, sometimes when you are the one doing something, you will say it is not. Until you, it turns back. You get what I'm saying? Nah, why is he reacting like that now? Nah? He should not have reacted. Should be I talked and he, I spoke and he spoke back. He should not have talked now. Nah. Don't worry. The world is a, a cycle. The day is coming that you will receive what you are doing. How many of you know it is a righteous thing? God's law is very simple. Whatsoever any man so. If you are going about scattering seeds of discord on people, don't worry. I want to tell you one truth. You can't plant maize. Marie Kassava. Life is simple. It's direct. It can take years, but it's a cycle. And many a times, the day it will rise up for you is the day you don't need that experience at all. That's the day you will say, ah, so this is what this person was going through when I was doing this. If you have sowed the wrong seed, mercy will find you tonight. Everybody is looking like it. They've not sowed the wrong seed. Uh, people have collected. There are people married to people that they collected the guy from. From another person, oh, bad jagba, not cheap. Into bad jagba, my worry. Well, <laughs> because you came tonight, may mercy find you. Amen. Kilo, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kilo, tie like in no gang. How much could you move, Matimo? Kilo, tie. What do you like about the girl? Uh, I don't want to tell you things. No worry. Today they start telling your own things. How many of us here before God can allow God to place a screen here and show the church your life? If you are bold, there is Samuel, there is Paul, whose gold have I taken, whose silver have I taken, I've taken no person's wife. Can I? Is there anybody like that? Don't say, I want you, Timothy, she said, you're not a judge to take part. It needs to go to God. Mercy is the reason why our head is lifted. So go show mercy. Go back to that Thessalonians. It's a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. Continue. And to give you who are troubled rest. God will give you rest. With us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints, to be admired among those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed, Pray when God comes, he will be admired in you. His coming will not be judgment. His coming will be justification. When it comes in that day, who is is there? Hello? When it comes in that day to be glorified and said to be admired among those who believe because your testimony among um, our testimony among you was believed. Verse 11 and 12. Therefore, when you pray, therefore we also pray that that for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. And verse 12, that the name of Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of God and Lord Jesus Christ. May your journey in Jesus be a journey of glorification in the name of Jesus. Who are the people of Amnon? I want to rush because of time. The people of Amnon they were like cousins to Israel in Genesis chapter 19 verse 30 to 38 they were children of Lot who was raised in Abraham's house and when Lot ran out of Sodom 
His two daughters got him drunk and slept with their fathers. Their father. The first one gave birth to a son and they called him Moab. And the next one gave birth to a son and they called him Ben Ami. And the Bible says that Ben Ami is the father or the progenitor of the children of Ammon. As the Moab was the father and progenitor of the children of Moab. When you get to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. Deuteronomy chapter 2. God told Israel, you are about to pass through the territory of the children of Amnon. They are afraid of you, but I will not give you their land for possession. I will not even give you a foot. Pass through it. Because I've given it to the descendants of Lot as a possession. When Israel had a chance to overtake them, God said, no! Israel showed mercy. They didn't look at them and said, you are children of incest. They didn't look at them and say, you, you people, you are children of Lot. We, we left Abraham. God said, I'm not giving. I will respect my covenant with them. By the time you get to Judges chapter 11, from verse 8 to 33, when you get to the the children of Amnon started fighting the children of Israel. So much that Jephthah had to rise and Jephthah said, if I fight for you, Israel, will I be your head? They said, yes. Then Jephthah went to the children of Ammon. What is the issue? Why are you coming? And Ammon said, you took our land. Israel said, no, I did not take your land. When I was even coming, God said I should not take your land. It was the land of Sion and the land of Og, the king of Bashan, that fought against Israel that I took. They appealed to them. And said, listen, Moab, your brother, is not fighting us. We passed through their land too and we didn't touch their land. We passed through your land, but they didn't do anything. They didn't believe. They rose up against Jephthah until Jephthah said, Lord, if you give me victory against these people, whatever comes out of my house first, I'm giving it to you. I'm going to show you that Amnon is never troubled by Israel. Every time Amnon comes into conflict with Israel, they steer it. So you are not the one that will look for, for conflict. You are not the one. It is continuous in you to bless. But some people if they will, they can make themselves repulsive. Are you following me? Am I making sense? And by the time they make themselves repulsive, they determine what they receive. Are you following me? People can determine what they receive, but never cause. But people can determine what they receive. Are you following me? Children of Amnon. It was the children of Amnon in 1 Samuel 11 verse 1 to 15. Who in the days of King Saul told Israel that our covenant with you, if you is that we will remove your high, Nahash. The word Nahash, that's the name of their king. You see, when you go through scripture, you see that Amnon's king is Nahash as the king of Egypt is Pharaoh. Nahash is, means serpent. The manifestation of the devil. It's a manifestation of the devil for you to reward evil the good of people. It's not, your, it's not your character. It's just the way I feel. It's not the way you are feeling. You have given yourself to satanic influence. Are you following me, church? They told Israel, they said, well, the only way we have covenant with you is that we will come and remove your eyes. The people who did not take your land. Until God raised Saul, the king, and he fought for Israel and broke the grip of the people of one major story that you know about them is in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 1 to 30. In the days of Jehoshaphat, the three nations that God told Israel never take their land when you are going to the promised land. Edom, Moab, and Amnon. The Bible says it came to pass it happened after this, that the people of Amnon with the people of Hamon and with the others beside them, the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. You see, and, and the Bible said they, they came and told Joseph that a great multitude is coming. This is the problem. Now, you, sometimes you will regret that you did not act fast. The, your flesh will say, ah, see, you are the one that allowed the enemy to gain advantage because now they become a great multitude. Sometimes the enemy wants you to regret that you did not, you did things the God's way. Don't worry. 
there's no point to regret. You have only put the battle in God's hand. That's why when you get to 2 Chronicles 20, God said you will not need to fight in this battle. You don't need to regret that you did not act the way men act. I do, are you following me? You have only changed the battle of who is for you. They become a multitude against you from the sea, from Syria, they are in Azazon, Tama, which is Engedi. Look at verse 3. Joseph had fear. Can I tell you the truth? When, no matter how, how deep a Christian you are, when you see the depth of the evil of us out of men, sometimes fear will strike you. The possibilities that can enter human heart. You get what I'm saying? He feared. I was just blessed. How many of you can be, you know how you can be talking to somebody and they are recording you? And they go to present it somewhere. Say, eh? I thought I was talking to a human being. You are talking to Nahash. The serpent. Some people come to talk to you as if they want to just talk to you. They are looking for something to hold on to. I don't know whether you have met those demonic manifestations. If you have not met it, you will meet it. It's in your journey. Joseph had feared. And I tell you the truth, I need that to sink. It doesn't matter how Christian you are. When you face these things, fear will hit your heart. Especially when you can't react like they react. He feared. He set himself to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast. Lord, you seem so far away. A million miles or more. You know, sometimes when the battle really comes, you don't sense God. You say, but it's God. It's you have been obeying you. It's you have been obeying you. See, the conflict he had brought me. He set his face to seek God. Look at verse 10 because of time. That Joseph are talking to God. He said, Now, here are the people of Amnon, Moab, Montier, that is Edom, whom you will not let Israel invade. When you came out of the land, when they came out of the land, but they have turned from them and but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Verse 11. And here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out. Like, God, did I miss an opportunity? I should have taken. Because you have been merciful and the enemy is trying to make you look like a fool for being merciful. Are you following me? Those of us felt like, ah, ah, see what they are doing. They now want to throw us out of possession which you have given us to inherit. When we are coming out, when we are coming out and people, ha- when Jericho heard that we came out of the Red Sea, they troubled. We had fear. And it was with us that time. The hack was going before us. We were winning battles upon battles. At that point, we could have won. But you said no. And we said yes, Lord. Whatsoever you say is what we will do. We won one. We could have crushed them. But yes, you did not allow us. And we obeyed you. But this time that they have come, we left them until they have become so strong and see what they are doing. And they, and they began to pray, Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power. We have come into a season that what we left has become what we don't have power against. Ah, you didn't get what I just said there. We now don't have power. We could have crossed it at a moment, but we did not cross it until it had become something we cannot cross. We have no power. Against this moment that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. Should I now start fighting? So we set our eyes on you and the Lord said to them, you will not need to fight in this battle. May the Lord take over from you. Ah, you missed a good place to say it. You will not need. How do you want to fight your father? Where do you want to start the battle from? What do you want to say? You will not need to fight in this battle. There are some some committees you go to, there is no argument you want to raise, you cannot win. Because you are signing things you didn't know some people are documenting against you. It is the day they pile it together. 
that you discovered that it was a conspiracy. But you will not need to fight in this battle. Don't be dismayed, for the battle is not yours. It's God's. God always have enough power to prosecute his agenda. Do you understand? You might not always have power. So when I am weak, he is strong. Are you following me? You might not always have the power to prosecute, but God will always have the power to do whatever he wants to do. So there's nothing to regret for not acting like natural men. Because vengeance is the Lord. And he said, I will it be. Ah, my higher. Who wants to see God do it by himself? They said, God is the only one that does the surgery. You won't see blood. And it will remove something. There won't be any incision. There won't be. It's cleaner than your hunger. Are you following me? It will operate. You will not see a trace. One day, David wanted to go and kill. Uh, what's that now? Neba. The wife said, Please don't kill him. He went. Ten days after the man died, David began praise. Ah, thank God. No. May you not go and hit somebody with a punch who is on his way to death. So you, you just raise your finger. They ah, the man will walk on them. David, you didn't kill Neba. It was your anger the enemy wanted the man to play. Neba was already on his way to judgment. But the way your anger is working on you, you can be so overwhelmed. You want to act. You want to act. That's why you must make up your mind. I can't curse. I'm a messy merchant. That's my makeup. Don't worry. That I'm a messy merchant does not mean I'm not defended. But my defense is not mine. I do not fight by my own hand. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull down strong. You are not getting this message. Are you getting this message? Glory to God. Proverbs 13, verse 21. I'm tying up with some scriptures I'll mention. Listen to me. Evil pursue sinners, but the righteous good will be repaid. Tell your neighbor, you are not going to lose anything for doing the right thing. Let that settle in your heart. Evil will pursue sinners. You will not pursue them. Some people have already set in motion what we what we conflagrate them, what we take them in the days to come. People will say, Why well, did it happen to them? They won't know what they were doing at some time. But, but the righteous will be repaid with good. Good will come on your part. If there's anybody here who has been repaid evil for good, don't, don't be moved and put your hand in iniquity. Because evil will pursue sinners. Psalm 35 from verse 11 to 17. Are you blessed tonight? Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. <laughs> Pastor, where were you? 7.35 p.m. on Tuesday. May God deliver you from the person that is Don't show Natasha. What's the English word? The <laughs> monitoring spirit. Pastor, I've been watching you. There's a way you now call around me the daughter. Hmm. There are some monitoring spirit. If you greet people on bed, they, they know. Pastor Tiki. Tiki while later. If you want to greet somebody, greet somebody. Stop, stop doing me. It's not let the devil possess your heart. It's too important for the kingdom. They reward me evil for good. For the sorrow of my soul. Nobody is paid evil for good and they rejoice. It's a very crushing moment in anybody's life. This person, this guy, that I poured, I poured, I poured, I poured my soul, I poured. Hey, you are not my father. You are not my father. Which father? 
Something in you will want to rise, eh? Be dumb for a moment, but you cannot cause. This, this psalm is a but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, my prayer will return to my own heart when they were sick. I paced about as though it were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother when they were sick. Verse 15. But in my adversity, they rejoiced. Did you hear what just happened? How many of you know people that, that they know the latest gist? I heard one, and, and, and I've said it before in this church, it struck me. I was a man, this man of God. My friend told me he was in that meeting. He said, he was in this about the woman came from Adoikit. She had cancer. She came late. They were rounding up the service. When she opened the door and entered. And this man of God, at that moment, said, there is a woman here. You came from Adoikit. You have cancer. The Lord just healed you. And that was how that woman was. He was somebody we knew. It was not that the story they told us. Years later, the man of God fell into a moral crisis. Then my friend overheard the woman who is now a dickiness in their church. Eh? Only God even knows the type of power they use. When they were sick, I paced about. How many of you have somebody tells you, I can't pay my, for my son's school fees, it becomes your problem. And some of us said that God has given such a you carry even your husband will say, while I take your roller, it's not you, it's, it's the nature that God has put in you. It's the nature of mercy, it's God's kindness. But don't always think that that's the way you are, is the way men will do to you. But in my adversity, they rejoice, they gathered together, attackers gathered against me. I did not know it, they tore at me, they did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feast, they gnashed with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction. My precious life from the lions. It's a lion attack. When people do such things to people. If it has not happened to you, you are the one that will say, Where is Pastor? They're acting like that. Oh, potishie, ombo. I say it's a cycle. When people you have poured into will do those type of things to you, that's when you will know the pain and the crisis that is in that type of moment. Don't downplay what you have not gone through. Are you following me? Don't downplay what you have not gone through. Don't say, why is he reacting like that? It's not you. Psalm 38 verse 20. Psalm 38 verse 20. Those who render evil for good, they are my adversaries. Because I follow what is good. Somebody say, I will never be found rendering evil for good. Psalm 109 verse 5. Psalm 109 verse 5. Thus, they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Why am I mentioning this? Because the psalmist kept mentioning it because it's a phenomenon that cannot easily be ignored. He that Overlook errors. What is he looking for? He's looking for love. Love does not just happen. Love is invested in. You overlook. You create opportunity. You create. You go, you go to people's houses. It's not because you are jobless. It's because you seek love. You call people. He said, "How are you? Happy birthday. God bless you." It's not that you are jobless. It's because you seek love. But there's, you understand what I'm saying? And sometimes when you have done all that, you get the other one. God does not ignore this experience in anybody's life. Because an experience that the enemy can use to crush you, God does not help you. Some of you will put your hand in your pocket and say, never again will I carry anybody's issue for my... Has I I ever put to somebody here? And you buy this old school fees, you man, call on a lower... But for all of us. Ah, 
There are things you hear, your soul will sing. I'm telling you. After all these years, people still think like this. Proverbs 17, verse 13. Whoever rewards evil for good, hear this word. Evil will not depart from his house. This is the reason why you must make up your mind today that no matter what happens, you will never reward evil for good. People who reward evil for good set themselves. That's why I said it is Ammon that will determine what they receive. They made themselves repulsive to David. David did not react. Are you following? Did you see that that chapter they kept moving from battle? To battle, to battle because of what they did. He that rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. That is not you. I said, That is not you in the name of Jesus Christ. I saw one place in the scripture where an Ammonite made a difference. If that is the prevalent spirit in the whole world, Make up your mind to be a difference. In 2 Samuel 17, 27 to 29, David was running from his own son, Absalom. The Bible said, when it happened, when David had come to Mani, that Shobi, the son of Nahash, from Rabbah, of the people of Ammon, and Maka, the son of Amir, from Lodeb and Basilai, the Gileadite from Rogelim, what did they do? He brought beds. This is one place where an Ammonite said, no, 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 no. I will repay good. Are you following me? Suddenly, we found a man from Ammon repaying good even when David's own son was chasing his life. Go out. It does not matter when, if an attitude has become a prevalent attitude around us. Be the difference. Say, I'm not part of that. That's not me. Everybody can be doing it. Everybody can be going around and backbiting and talking about people and, 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 and backstabbing people. Not me. I am born again. Are you following me, church? Someone say, I'm born again. The spirit walking in me is different from the spirit walking in the children of disobedience. I'm not somebody that will set myself in the process of continuous conflict against God. I'm a mercy merchant. The only thing that flows out of me is mercy. Prophesy to yourself, say, I'm a mercy merchant. Say, I, I, you're not saying it very well. Say, I'm a mercy merchant. I hope you know that mercy is becoming a very hard thing to invest in our world. It's a mean world. It's a world of enemies. It's a world of intrigues. But I'm a mercy merchant. I'm a mercy merchant. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Isaiah 26, verse 7 to 11. Isaiah 26, verse 7 to 11. The way of the just is uprightness. Almost upright you weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgment, O Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. Get this word. With my soul I have desired you in the night, yet with my spirit within me I seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will what? Land righteousness. So when David fought the Ammonites, what did he expect? That they will have a mental shift. But what did they do? They doubled down. Let grace be shown to the wicked. Yet, it will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, it will deal unjustly. I will not behold the majesty of the Lord. He is unteachable. Let grace be shown to the wicked. It will not learn. That's not me. I said, that's not me. Verse 11 said, when your hand is lifted up, they will not see. 
but they will see and be ashamed for the envy of the people. See, when David went to Amnon, they did not see his intention. But after they've done error, that's when their eyes open that they've what? Made themselves repulsive. They learned too late. Are you following me? Say, for me, I'm quick to understand mercy. Say, I'm quick to understand mercy. Pray for yourself tonight and say, Father, make me quick to understand mercy in all my dealings. I'm quick to understand mercy. I'm quick. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Rabba Shanda Laboko Rabaya. Ah, he said, they will not see, but they will see. May your eyes not open when it is too late. They will not see when God is teaching them, but they will see when the consequences come. But for me, I'm quick to understand mercy. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. It's in Matthew 18, verse 21 and 22. Peter went to Jesus. How many times my, my brother offend me? And I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus said, 70 times seven. Which means make mercy your permanent address. Don't get easily exhausted in it. Are you following me? Say, Lord, help me to be full of mercy. I want you to pray for yourself. You are living in a mean world. You are living in a world where people are mean. Lord, let me be full of mercy. Over and over again. When they call for mercy, it's demanded in my soul. Make me rich in it. Make me rich in your mercy. You are not praying the way I want you to pray. The world needs it. But the enemy is making it very hard for men to flow in it. But God will help us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Seventy times seven. Inexhaustible capacity to have a large heart. I receive a fresh. I refuse to be caught by the serpent spirit of Nahash. I refuse to be caught by the spirit of the enemy that is walking in the midst of the children of disobedience. Oh, I'm a new creature. I'm a new man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. Oh, things have passed away. I'm born again. You don't know that song? Yes. That's who I am. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. I'm more than conquerors. I'm more than conquerors. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. Creation. I'm a brand new. Sing it one more time. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. I'm more than conqueror. Oh, that's who I am. I'm a new creation. Oh, and I'm a brand new man. 
Finally, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11 to 15. I want us to make a clean break from the ways of men. You are a new creature. For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand. When you hear the Lord speak with a strong hand, that means this is something to watch. And instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people. Somebody say, I will not walk in the way of the world. Say, do not say a conspiracy concerning all that these people call a conspiracy. Not be afraid of their threats. Not be troubled. Let the Lord, the Lord of hosts, let him, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. It will be as a sanctuary. But a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense both to the house of Israel, a trap and snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble, they shall fall and be broken, be snared and taken. A lot of people will be snared and taken in what they are doing. But if you have made a difference and say, I will not call it conspiracy, what they call it conspiracy. I will fear the Lord. When they have been taken for their consequences, you would have escaped. Are you following me? Today, may the Lord baptize in us tonight afresh with his fear. I thought you would say it better. Amen. That's what we es- make you escape from the snare that people are setting from themselves with their attitude. They seem to be winning now, but they are setting a snare, a stumbling block for themselves in their own part. But the Lord is your own fear. The Lord is your own dread. The Lord is your is, is, who occupies your mind. Are you following me? And it will make a way of deliverance for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands tonight and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. As a new creation. As somebody who is a mercy merchant. My heart is filled. I will do good. I will bless them that cost me. Wherever I go Lord. I, I release the blessings of the Lord. I release the blessings of the Lord. I release the blessings of the Lord. To people who deserve it. To people who don't deserve it. In my office. In my family. People who have woke me up. People who have stressed me out. Oh, I bless them. Some of you need to call out some, some names tonight. And just bless them. And just bless them. And bless them in the name of the Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Put the blessing of God upon them. Put the blessing of God upon them. Put the blessing of God upon them. The of God upon them. And let the Lord take over. For you will not need to fight in this battle. This battle is not yours. This battle is the Lord's. Is the Lord. Thank you for fighting my battle. Thank you for fighting my battle. In Jesus' name we have prayed.